Welcome to Engineering is in our DNA, a podcast series where we talk about the next in engineering that is powering the future for businesses across the world. We are back with Arjishman Majumda and Rohit Patel as they continue their discussion on how businesses can leverage quantum for business today and share relevant use cases. And here, where RJ want to ask you, how is quantum computing in the system growing today? Sure, Rohit. So like you mentioned, right, to overcome these challenges, having a strong ecosystem is one of the main ways in which we can actually promote quantum computing. And this is being done at multiple levels. So, for example, at the national policy level, you have about 15 countries today, including India, which have a national quantum computing policy. And there's a lot of investment flowing in from the governments themselves. For example, more than $1 billion for basic and applied R&D has been provided through this national quantum computing policy by India alone. And this would help develop the capability for quantum computing over the next five years. Other than the government, there's a lot of investment by the large organizations and the venture capitalist firms in a lot of startups. For example, between 2015 to 2020, the investment in the QC space has grown by 500%. And the spending is likely to reach 9.1 billion USD by 2030. This is from only, you know, 20 to 60 million USD, which was there a couple of years ago. And this is really helping the startup ecosystem to grow. Industry leaders such as Google, IBM, Microsoft, all of them are putting in a lot of efforts in developing this ecosystem. And so are the large uh, quantum computing hardware providers like Regati, Xanadu, D-Wave, all of them. So beyond the investments, the academic partnerships and the university collaborations are hotbeds where a lot of quantum research and applied quantum research is also happening. Emphasis has tied up with University of Calgary for the quantum city. We have launched the Center for Quantum Computing in IIT Madras. All of this try to promote fundamental research in the areas of quantum computing, as well as provide a lot of training to engineers. One other you know, very interesting aspect is where there are a lot of hackathons and ideathons which are happening. And this is essentially to find out what are the three use cases, how they can be applied or solved through quantum computing. Microsoft Azure Quantum QIO is, for example, there's a lot of challenges around that, uh, which were posed. BMW launched something together with the AWS for quantum computing challenge in 2021. We are partnering with Meti and AWS Quantum Computing Applications Lab to host a longer hackathon where we would have industry participants, startups and academia sort of submit uh, proposals and then evaluate it and actually mentor it through their journey of building applications. So all of these factors together are leading to a very you know, strong ecosystem. There are still challenges to adoption. And maybe Rohit, you'd like to talk a little bit about what should be the path of adoption for the enterprises who are looking for applying quantum computing technology, right? And many believe it's still in its infancy. So yeah, so a very relevant question. How I see quantum computing adoption, uh, first enterprises should look at medium to long term cycle in this particular case. And a business leader, they need to ask certain specific questions according to McKinsey. For example, does the economic value achieved by the quantum speed up or does the resolution of a previously unsolvable problem justify your investment? Is there a known quantum algorithm for the mathematical problem behind the use case? For example, we have source algorithm for factoring and that allows you to build more secure systems. You can further look at how large a quantum speed up is required to create a practical advantage over conventional high performance computing. Another question that we can go into is what kind of hardware will be required to achieve this speed up? And when this hardware might be available, so companies today are using quantum unending time systems to run optimization, simulation, and some sort of machine learning. But the universal computers of quantum computing are gateways today, and those are not very large. And given that uh, background, uh, you may not be able to solve your problem on at scale on these systems. Finally, we have to look at this, whether being an early mover create a long-term strategic advantage in quantum computing. And I'm totally in line with this particular question because given the potential quantum computing has, being an early mover in certain areas will definitely help companies mostly in finance, life sciences, and say chemicals industry. Now, looking further into it, leaders outside the quantum computing industry need to take some concrete steps to prepare for the maturity of quantum computing in coming decades. The need to follow industry developments and actively screen quantum computing use cases with an in-house team of quantum computing experts 
or they can also collaborate with industry entities and join a quantum computing consortium. They need to understand the most significant risk and disruptions and opportunities in their industry. They should consider whether they should partner or invest in quantum computing players, mostly software to facilitate access and knowledge. They can consider building in-house computing talent as well. Now, business leaders further need to prepare by building a digital infrastructure that can meet the basic operating demands of quantum computing. Archie, we have discussed about what is quantum computing, where it can be applied, its nascency, what should be the path of adoption. But looking from emphasis point of view, given our motto is engineering is in our DNA, how does it resonate in context of quantum computing? What are we doing today that resonates with this motto? Uh, sure, Rohit. So like our CEO Nitin Rakesh mentions, right? So engineering is all about designing and building solutions, which are not only for today, but tomorrow and day after as well. And that's pretty much the uh, essence of the engineering is on our DNA campaign. So at uh, Next Labs, right, the applied R&D unit of emphasis, what we have been doing is investing and researching about the applications of quantum computing over the last three years. And our vision is to build an industry-ready quantum computing capability, which will focus on customer-relevant solutions. This could be in the areas of quantum AI, optimization, simulation, and this could be across multiple verticals. But the focus is on building a lot of innovations and, you know, our patent pending platform Eon is a great example of how we have done this application and engineering in the field of quantum computing. Finally, we have also created a number of different quantum solutions. These could be applied to a lot of business problems. These templates are ready. These are growing very quickly, and there are solutions around last mile optimization, airline pairing, crew rostering, animality detection, portfolio optimization, vehicle damage analysis. So all of these are very practical business problems for which we have built quantum computing solutions. And that's where you know we are trying to build more and more quantum solutions focused on solving problems for today as well as for tomorrow.